Hello and welcome back with Film and Game Composers. I'm Mina Shimali, and we are continuing our look at Stress Off Sampling's Aleatoric Modular Series Brass. And in this video, we are checking out the French horn specifically. Uh, so, as we had said, this is obviously all about user user guided aleatoric uh, brass, and you can purchase the French horn separately as part of their modular approach, which would cost you $110. Uh, it would be a little cheaper as part of the bundle. But, you know, that's the beauty of it, is that you don't have to buy anything you don't want to if you're only really planning on using French horns for all your aleatoric needs. So, yeah, quick rundown of the specs. Uh, again, contact four or higher. We need the full version, so this won't load up in the co free contact player. Uh, the instrumentation here is actually six French horns, and they've divided it up so you can get uh, three French horns, uh, two, two groups of three French horns each, uh, doing a bunch of the articulations, and then for some of the other articulations, uh, you get the full six on, uh, six horn ensemble. So that's pretty cool, and that already doubles the amount of control you have over the sound uh, of the library. Uh, everything is recorded normal, 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 or you know, unmuted and muted or stopped, uh, and guide your dynamics via mod wheel or any CC of your choice. Uh, that's all part of the user guiding. Uh, four mic positions, close Tekka, out triggers and balcony, plus a mis mixed mic position, and recorded in the Sophia Session Orchestra, which is the warm dry hall there. Uh, they're talking about because you got six of the best French horn players in Bulgaria in the Sophia Session Orchestra Hall, which is the same as the rest of this library and uh, most of their other orchestral libraries. Uh, so yeah, so as the tagline goes, perfect for scoring trailers, games, and film, especially horror and tension writing. So uh, let's jump back straight into it and have a look. So installation, as we said, is uh, uh, you can get it manually via RAR files, or you have an installer uh, from Stress All Sampling, which I haven't used, but, uh, you know, it's possible. Uh, the other thing is it requires 15 gigabytes of free space, just this one, this uh, French horns uh, section of the library, which is double the trumpets uh, because we've got two sections recorded, so almost needs double the amount. So there you go. So uh, here we've got it loaded up in Contact, uh, full version of Contact 5 and running, so you won't find it in the Libraries tab. So need to find it in the Files tab or the Quick Load Browser, which I've got it here. So, uh, as we said, the difference here is that we've got horns A and horns B, so each of them three horns, and for some of the articulations you get the full six horns, uh, six horn uh, version. Now, by default it actually loads up the decatree, but I've changed it here to the uh, full mix because I like that as a full representation. Uh, so, yeah. Here we go. Uh, let's have let's just jump straight into the articulations. So first we got lip bends. We got flutter bends. Jitters. We got flurries. So, as usual, we've also got muted versions, stopped versions here. Stop trills. Stop jitters. As you can see, I'm controlling all the mod wheel. And stop flurries. So yeah, so there you go. Now, what I'd like to quickly do is look at the difference between uh, A and B. So these three players and these three players. So I've just loaded up here, and I'll just mute and solo as per uh, required. So, if, see for example the lip bends here with with the A section. 
play the same thing with the B section. And again, same mic position, full. So they seem to do a bit of a different thing. And if you play them together, so it's pretty cool. Uh, you get a fuller sound with six French horns. Flutter bends here, for example. Then try to flutter bends in B. Uh, try the trills. And together. So, uh, try the jitters. Jitters here. So it's a little different, uh, but gives you a lot more options. So say, for example, you don't like the jit particularly like the jitters in A, you might use the jitters in B instead, and vice versa. And you can combine them if you'd like. So what else we got? Flurries. Try that here. So the performances are a little different. Which is uh, pretty, it's pretty interesting uh, and adds a lot more options to what you're doing. Uh, you got your topped lip bends as well. Try that with the B. See what I mean? Uh, try these top flutter bends. So see, there's quite a, quite a bit of difference, which, I mean, they're both doing the same thing, but they're doing it a little differently. Um, try that here now. Let's top trills. And try it here. See what I mean? So you get a wider array of articulations uh, to play with. So you get the jitters. B. And try the flurries. Try it here. That was flurry, yeah. So there you go. Uh, oh, I accidentally saved. No, I didn't save it. It's already there. Uh, there's a there's a mixed articulation <laughs> thrown in. Uh, but yeah, so uh, already there's double the amount of samples or or you know possible sounds recorded, and then you just mix them the way you'd like. It's it's that that amount of controls mind blowing. Uh, so yeah. Uh, Next, I just want to check out the standard sustains, and these are they'll be the same across the board because they'll be uh, all six French horns together. So this is what it sound like. Oops. Hmm, my computer is acting up, acts up, does this sometimes. This is not the library. This is my computer being. There we go. What I like here is that the again the transition between dynamic layers is pretty smooth in the sustains. Like it's great in the in the rest of the library, uh, but they're random enough for that not to be a big deal if it wasn't that smooth. But in the sustains, you can really tell that these guys have got a handle on how to how to smoothly uh, transition between layers. <laughs> So it really makes me want to, again, try out their standard brass library, which is recorded in the same hall. I think it might be the same players. Uh, if that's the case, the, if they've recorded, captured it all this way, I'm very interested. So sonically, this library is great. 
So it's not just about the control, but sonically, I like what they've done. So I really like the use of the, the sound of the, uh, the hall they've recorded in. Uh, and if we try the Harmon, sorry, not the Harmon, the stopped uh, sustain. So this is the same across both, so it won't make a difference if it's A or B. Uh, just to double check that, let's play the sustain here. So, got sustains over here, back here. So yeah, so the sustains won't make a difference. Uh, so yeah, so there you go. That's the uh, uh, that's the sustains as well. So. As I'm saying, it's a testament to how well they transition between dynamic layers, which sometimes not like because I'm, I don't know, not everyone seems to get it right, but these guys have gotten it right, so it feels really like the transition feels really smooth. See what I mean? Obviously, there isn't any staccatos or mercados or any or legatos to play with here, but you know, just as a stem to sustain, I would, I would not mind using it or maybe even layering it under a legato from another library. So yeah, so there you go. Uh, quick look at the mic positions, and I'll try to run through A and B together. But this is what it sounds like, and I'll just do the quick rundown that I did before. So I'm gonna load up all the mic positions here and we'll just go f from full and I'll do that, so that I'll just kind of play the articulation and then uh, solo on mute close decatry uh, our trigger and balcony so as you can tell, the balcony kind of has a different tone, sounds as distant as the Decatree and Outrigger, but without being too wet, uh, but seems to uh, capture a different part of the tone. Perhaps it's a bit louder if I put it down. I don't know, it just sounds interesting. So I'll just run through the other articulations. So with flutter bends up here so obviously the full articulation sounds a lot full fuller just from one mixed down mic position because you capture a perspective a different perspective of sound so uh, tell the difference you then got trills So here the difference between all the mic positions is a lot more apparent. Uh, jitters. We've got flurries. And then I'm just gonna get to this topped ones. So it's top lip bends. We got top flutter bends. Again, this is one of the articulations where the differences between the mic position is a lot more uh, obvious. We got top trills. We got top jitters. And stop flurries. So 
So there's a lot of control again, uh, sonically. There's a lot of control. Uh, what I might do quickly is just uh, run down through the B section what the mic positions sound like. Uh, loading them is going to take a tiny bit of time. So in the meantime, I'll just play the sustains and check out the mic positions uh, on them. So start off with the close for the sustains. Again, that's my computer being... Apologies, this isn't supposed to happen. And then Decatree. Then you got our trigger. Balcony. And you got your full mix. Which is honestly my favorite because they really capture the best of everything. On the sustains at least. Actually on most of them, but on the sustains it really works. So, yeah. Uh, and this is topped sustain sound like this with the mix, with the mic positions. Obviously the attack is a little slower, but that's okay. Uh, Decatree. Out trigger balcony and full. So yeah, so there's there's your uh, full sustains, your six. French horn sustains. Let's have a quick look at let's have a quick uh, look at what it sounds like for the B section. And start with close with the lip bends. If we bear to here. So the relative difference is similar, but obviously you got a different sound with the three with the different players. I feel that these the second group of players is a little more intense. Compare this to these trills. Know what I mean? Uh, try these with the jitters. Now try the flurries. And the stopped. Compare that to the A. I don't know, it just feels like B is a little more intense. So it's not just a choice of different players, but slightly different approaches to the same articulations, which is a great thing for more options.
And yeah, so that's that is pretty amazing that you can do that. Uh, so I'm, I'm very very impressed with what they've done with the library, both sonically and uh, and in terms of control. So that I'm pretty uh, that's pretty great. Now, as usual, we have random starts here, which uh, again. A quick recap if I go. So, if I make it the fl it's a lot more apparent with the flurries. Every time it starts differently. If I put it zero, it starts the same so from the same part of the sample. I wish there was a controlled offset for the sample, but that's fine. That, that, this, is, this is the one thing I really wish they would have done, you know? Uh, obviously, low pass, high pass, everything's. We've covered that in the interface video. Uh, then the next thing I'd like to uh, look at is just mixing the articulations. So, so this is tains. Let's empty that out and try mixing uh, lip bends and jitters, for example. So as we've done before, I've transformed CC22 to CC2, which CC2 is what's used to control the uh, mix between articulations. So start it here. Bends and go up to jitters. I can move them a lot slower. So, you know, that's pretty awesome. And you can, and you can do that, and then you can also mix in the muted sustains, muted uh, articulation, sorry. So say start with jitters and with lip bends. The other way, why not? So again, the control is not just about dynamics, it's not just about a little variation, a little random start. Um, it's even between uh, different Artic mixing between different articulations in real time in one go. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, now next, uh, we've covered this in the interface video, but I will play the cluster splits. Uh, uh, Stopped cluster split. Uh, so the cluster split, as we covered, uh, starts off with sustains, and then Deviation on CC71 and extension. If we activate it here, it's uh, something else on CC74. So. so, again, a pretty useful, really useful articulation. Uh, I just wish that the extension was separate from the deviation because you can control the extension as a result of the deviation. So I don't know if they could think about uh, that for an, for an update, but I sure would love it. Uh, and I might try seeing what it sounds like for the B. So say use that for the cluster splits. Oh, wait a second. The cluster split is uh, across both, so it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> my bad. It's the cluster split uses the full section, so it doesn't matter which A or B. The cluster split will be the same. The stop cluster split sounds like this. Oops, my bad. There you go. So, uh, yeah, I really, it's, it's a really great feature. Uh, just, I've mentioned my, my slight gripes with it, but, uh, in a library of this scope and this size, that's just this extra added topping. That's, that's really cool to have. Uh, last but not least, we've got our, uh, risers and falls, which again, they're all, uh, all six horns are playing. So it's not going to matter which, uh, one I use. So we have both in both muted and, uh, 
normal articulations. So uh, again, mod wheel down uh, is a fall and mod wheel up is a riser. So mod wheel down, mod wheel up is a riser. And uh, yeah, yeah, these top variation as well. So that's so that's pretty cool. And this is this is where you get them standard. Uh, of course, they've included a Time Machine Pro uh, uh, version which basically succumbs to the tempo of your piece, uh, of your track, the current tempo of your piece. So uh, you get both muted and unmuted. So. And if I go, for example, so if I'll just play the, so I'll play it so you can hear the uh, tempo and hear where, where it starts and stops. See how it stops on the downbeat? So this kind of stops just short of the uh, first downbeat. And if I change the tempo, you'll hear the you hear it together. I can also double the tempo if I'd like. And, or make it at half time. So I'll just use that on these slower articulations. So it depends on your tempo, of course, but uh, if you stretch it too far, some artifacts may appear, start to appear, but Overall, Time Machine Pro and Contact 5 is has a really great algorithm um, that's made it a lot more seamless and a lot less artifact-ridden. Uh, so yeah, so we can we got stopped versions as well. So again, this is great to be able to mix and match with other uh, with other articulations from the library and. Uh, set it to the tempo of your piece and completely control the outcome of this aleatoric uh, experiment. So yeah, so that covers the French horns. Uh, and uh, we'll be back with uh, our look at the low brass, the third library. So uh, tune back in.